Hey, it's Patrick from JMP Cycles, and today we're going to change oil, specifically in this 2008 Street Glide right behind me. And generally, if you have a Harley Davidson, this is basically going to be the same process we use for most Harleys. Definitely for all the late model baggers, the process is going to be very, very similar. Just make sure and check your owner's manual and or your service manual for their drain plug location. That's going to be key. So here we have in front of us, we have the Milwaukee Twins oil change kit. It comes with four quarts of oil and a nice chrome filter. I have a 3 8 drive ratchet and a couple of sockets. The first one we have is a 5 8 On this 2008 Street Glide, this fits our drain plug perfectly. And I have an 11 16 because the filter that I have on there has an 11 16 nut on the end of it. So it's going to be really easy to break loose. I also have a torque wrench. And you're going to say, well, it's just an oil change. What do you need a torque wrench for? When you go to put the drain plug back in, you definitely do not want to strip that out. So it's always good to follow the torque specs. Uh, especially on that drain plug. And then I have drain pan and a couple of rags. Pretty simple procedure, let's get to it. This is the oil dipstick, this is the transmission dipstick. Important, we have the right one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the oil dipstick up on this and the reason I'm gonna do that is it's gonna create a vent. So I'm just gonna leave this laying loose and I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna take the drain plug out. And it's this plug right here. There's an Allen head next to it and that is not it. A lot of people get confused. We definitely want this one here. The transmission drain is also over here, but we want this one and um, it's in the service manual if you can't remember that. So this should, uh, let me leave that extension on there. This should break loose relatively easy. Um, shouldn't be very tight at all. Once I kind of get it going, I'm gonna slide my drain pan a little closer. This is probably gonna spurt out just a little bit. And it's good to have a drain pan that holds about four quarts because there should be about three and a half or four quarts in here. And you definitely want a pan that's going to hold the oil that comes out of here. You want to be changing pans. There she goes. Okay. Well, that's draining. We can kind of check the end of this plug has a little magnet on it. And you can kind of check it out to see if there's a lot of debris on it. For some reason, there's a lot of metal shavings or something like that on there. It could be an indication that you have a more severe problem somewhere. Right now, ours looks pretty clean. There's always gonna be maybe a little, little bit of smudge on there, but this one's pretty clean. While we're waiting for that to drain out, it's important to note that most auto parts stores will take your oil for no charge. You put it in a bucket with a lid on it, run in there and ask them. They have a bin and they recycle it. Don't go dumping your oil in the gravel out back. So it looks like all the oil's finished draining out. Before we do the filter, I like to put the drain plug back in and torque it. That way I don't forget. If you move on to something without getting this back in, um, it could be problems for you later. Uh, it's also good to inspect this little O-ring right here. Ours looks like it's in good shape. There's no reason to replace it, but if it has any uh, tears or little hooks in it or something, it's a good thing to replace. So I'm gonna go ahead and put ours back in and torque it back now. So the thin stream coming out, but uh, It'd probably come out all night if we let it. So we're gonna run this back down in there. We have our torque wrench set at 16 pounds. Service manual recommends between 14 and 21 for this particular bike. And it's torqued. So I moved my drain pan forward because when we take this oil filter off, a fair amount of oil is gonna run out through here. Now you can like improvise different little troughs and paper plates and they sell little tools but uh, with the late model ones and the way the motors are mounted and the voltage regulators this is just going to get dirty you're probably just going to have to clean it off this particular filter has a nut on it which is going to make it really easy for us to get off there um, other times you may need an oil filter wrench you may resort to the old screwdriver through the oil filter or channel locks or something but uh, basically you just need to get it off you're not going to reuse it so this one should be easy these will tend to get like sucked down on there it can be pretty tight this one's pretty snug and i like to take my oil filter and just let it drain out in there when i dump dump the oil out i'll deal with the filter one thing I like to do when we put a new filter on is take a little bit of oil and run it around this rubber gasket here. This will allow to, the filter to spin down real nice on there. Um, you can go ahead and start this by hand. You really don't need to tighten these down a lot. In fact, you shouldn't tighten them down a lot. I'm gonna tighten ours by hand. And then 
This is the JMP Cycles uh, oil filter wrench. And this one's specific to a twin cam, as you can see this cutout right here is designed to fit past this sensor down here. Um, the other one that's made for an Evo would come close to fitting, but you'd have to kind of finagle with it. This one's real nice because it's made right for it. Like I said, we don't want to, you don't want to really horse these on. They just take a regular 3 8 drive extension. And I'm just going to tighten it up just a little bit because like I said, it, they're going to suck down on there as the oil pumps through. Okay, oil filter's on, drain plug's back in and torqued. Now it's time to put the new oil in. Okay, so we're gonna put some oil in and the service manual calls for three and a half quarts for this. So we're gonna put three and a half quarts in. I'm gonna start the bike and then we're gonna let the oil circulate through. We're gonna put the bike on the ground and check the level because that's how you check the level. You don't check it straight up and down. If you see here, it says check on Jiffy Stand. That's Harley Davidson speak for kickstand. So we're gonna look for it to be somewhere between half and all the way full after we circulate it through the engine and have it sitting on the kickstand. So we're gonna go ahead and fill it up. So I'm gonna use this funnel. If you really wanna go gangster, you can try to dump it in there without, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and put three and a half quarts in using our funnel. We're just going with a regular 2050 conventional oil here. You can use uh, whatever flavor you prefer. Smells like clean living. So, got three and a half quarts in. We're gonna run the bike, then we're gonna put it on the ground, check the level, and top it off if we need to. Okay, so we ran the bike, we pulled it off the lift, now we have it sitting on the side stand. So, we're gonna check the oil level and see where we're at. Pull this off. And then uh, actually gonna wipe it off and stick it back in there, just to get an accurate reading. When you wipe this off, make sure that no lint from the rag goes back in there with it. So screw it all the way down. And then we'll pull it back out and read the level. So we're right to the top of the full hot. The bike just ran, so we're about perfect, right where we need to be. And it's really a pretty simple procedure for something that's actually really important to your motorcycle. And you know what? Working on my motorcycle always makes me feel good too. It's good for the bike, and it makes me feel good. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to call us on our 800 number, chat with us online, or just uh, say something in the comment section below. We'd love to help you. Now go work on your motorcycle.